again. It's good to be back with you. Today I've got a problem for us on static friction. Now I think we all know what friction is. Friction is the shear force that's generated when one object tries to slide across another one. There's actually static and dynamic friction. In a lot of materials, those are actually different numbers. If a uh, object is sliding across another, there's one friction coefficient, and if they're static, not, not moving with respect to one another, there's a different friction coefficient. Those of you who've uh, ever slid a car may know the difference. When you're got the static friction of a tire against a road is higher than the dynamic friction, so once the car starts sliding, you actually have less uh, shear force against the road, which can be kind of scary, trust me. We're dealing with static friction today. This is a static problem, and so there's no acceleration. What I've got here is a very simple problem. We've got a ramp here. In a ramp, it could be a loading dock or something like that. And I've got a box on it. And it, this, it doesn't really matter what the geometry of the, of the object is right here. I just drew it as a box. And there's a static friction coefficient of 1 quarter, 0.25, between the ramp and the, the ramp and the box. And so what I want us to find out is let's find out what angle on that ramp, alpha, is the maximum angle we could have and without the box sliding. So what's the largest value of alpha that you could have with the box not sliding? So we've got a given, remember given, find, solution, answer. So we'll have to write find, otherwise we won't know when we're done with the problem. Max alpha for uh, no motion, I'll just call it that. Okay, so what's the maximum value of alpha you could have without the box starting to slide? Alright, so I'll write solution here. Alright, well how are we going to do this? Well, how do we do every statics problem? The very first step is almost always a free body diagram. And so I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the box. Alright, and I'm going to draw it at an angle here. Now, normally I use a uh, coordinate system that's horizontal with X and Y and then a moment in the counterclockwise direction. And I always say that I'll do that unless I've got a good reason not to. Today, there's a good reason not to. If the problem's going to be easier if I go ahead and align my coordinate system with the box. So here's my positive sign convention here. All right, And that angle there is alpha. Whatever, whatever alpha is, that's it. Okay. Now let's start talking about the forces that are uh, exerted on the box. Well, there's the friction force. Actually, I'm going to erase the alpha here. That's kind of in the way. We already know what that is. So there's the friction force, and I'll call that friction, or F sub F for friction force. Alrighty, and that's the force that friction is going to exert on the box that way to keep it from sliding. Now, there's going to be a weight that way, and that's it. There's, there's no other forces other than that. Well, how are we going to reconcile all that. Well, the easy way to do this is to have F, Y that way and F, X that way. Remember we've called those W, W, Y and W, X. That would be better. Okay, there. Now we got, now I've got something we can work with. I've broken the uh, uh, vertical force due to the weight down into the X and Y components. Alrighty, so let's just, you know, if that's, that's one, that's our free body diagram. Two is going to be equation of equilibrium. Equilibrium. Alright, well what equilibrium in what direction? Well, I know the box isn't going to move normal to the ramp. That's the whole point of the ramp is it supports the box. So there can't be any motion that way. The motion must be in the x direction. So I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction, which now goes this way, and the sum of those forces has to be zero. If not, there's acceleration. I don't want acceleration. This is a static problem. Well, let's see. Wx goes in the negative x direction, and F, the friction force, goes in the positive x direction. So I'll say minus Wx plus friction force equals zero. And that's it. There is no other force in the x direction. So that's pretty straightforward. All I've got to do now is write those in some form I can work with. Well, Wx is going to be W sine alpha. The, that ding you keep hearing is my cell phone going off. I keep getting texts while I'm doing this. And today I, was, I forgot to turn the sound off on the cell phone. Sorry. 
And uh, anyway, Wx is W sine uh, alpha. All righty. And let's see, friction force is mu times the normal force, normal force with that, with the respect to the ramp. And so that's going to be Wy. Well, what's Wy? Well, it's the component of force in that direction. That angle right there is alpha, right? Just in case you're wondering here. Now, if you're going to draw my force triangle, here's what it looks like. It's just to make sure we know where all these sines and cosines are coming from. That's W, Wx, Wy. Okay, with that being alpha. So that's where this is coming from. So um, W. Uh, y over w equals cosine alpha. So what I'm going to get here is mu, mu, w, cosine alpha. All right. Well, I've got everything in terms of w and in terms of alpha, only I don't know what w is. I didn't, it's not given in the problem. Well, either I forgot, which I didn't, or you don't need it. And it turns out we don't need it. So let's plug these two expressions into there and see what happens. And I'm going to make one more change here. I'm going to put Wx on one side of the equal sign and, and friction force on the other, so they'll equal one another. So I hit W sine alpha is going to be equal to mu W cosine alpha. Well, the W appears on both sides of the equation here, so I can divide it out. It doesn't matter what W is. And if you solve this, we're going to find out that mu equals sine alpha over cosine alpha. Whoops, let's try that again. Sine alpha, cosine alpha, and I'm well in the frame here, so that's good. And that equals tangent alpha. Well, if mu equals tangent alpha, that means that alpha must equal the inverse tangent of mu. Okay, there you go. Well, Let's do that. If, you, if, we, if we plug in 1 over 4 in for mu, alpha turns out to be, let me make sure I get this right, 14.036 degrees. Okay, I'm going to call that 14 degrees right there, so we're good to go. So we've got an answer, right? 14 degrees, that's about that much, right? Does that sound plausible? Sure, that's possible. It's not negative, it's not greater than 1, or no greater than 45. That looks like a pretty reasonable answer. Um, we could also plug that back into one of these other expressions here and make sure we get the right answer if we want to check it. Let's think about this for a second. What's the maximum value you could have for friction? Well, in, in problems like this, typically the maximum value you could have is 1. Well, if you had a friction coefficient of 1, which would be you know, basically a, a, like a rubber-on-rubber rubber kind of thing, a very, very high friction uh, uh, interface, What's the maximum angle you could have? Well, what's the inverse tangent of 1? That's 45 degrees. So the absolute maximum ramp angle you could have here is 45 degrees. And uh, if you don't believe me, go find a really, really steep embankment. Find one that's 45 degrees and try to climb it. All right? It's, it's going to be a pretty exciting experience. So I'm almost done here. I've got given find solution. All right, let's, let's do... Uh, Let's call that 3 right here because we actually calculated a number. So a given find solution, I've got to have an answer, so I'm going to write answer down here. And that's going to be, whoops, alpha equals 14.036 degrees. There you go. So we start with a static friction problem, work through the steps we always do with uh, statics problems. We've drawn a free body diagram, equations of equilibrium, solve the equations of equilibrium, and we got our answer. I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.